Hi everyone. Uh, today I want to summarize the results of three of the papers that I have been working on HIDVAT algorithmic cooling during my PhD. And HIDVAT algorithmic cooling is a method to decrease the temperature of physical system used by using the tools of quantum information processing. So why we are interested in this? There are several reasons that we want to cool physical systems. Some of them is because they are fundamental question of how physics behaves in the extremely low temperatures. Also will help us to understand better quantum thermodynamics. And we'll also have important applications in technologies, in particular for quantum computing, for quantum computers, for the preparation of initial states. It's required because many of the algorithms will start with highly pure initial states. So for that, we will need methods to decrease as much as possible the temperature of qubits. And also it's possible that during the computation, in the more realistic scenarios, some errors will happen and you will want to use quantum error correction. And again, for quantum error correction, you will need ancillas, which are in a pure state. So going back to the question of how to cool physical system, the conventional way is just taking your physical system and put it in contact with a vat of lower temperature. And one way to do that is, for example, inviting your friends to Canada. This picture was taken just in front of IQC. And wait for the winter. So <laughs> when we think deeper what is happening here, we can see that the entropy of the system before and after is different. So basically what is happening is that the environment is doing a processing of information since entropy is deeply connected with information. So here the key of algorithmic cooling is try to do the opposite way. Since we already know all the tools for processing information, we want to know if it's possible to design an algorithm, let's say a circuit, in such a way that we are going to have transfer of energy just by manipulating the entropy internally with some gates. So let's pose a more concrete question. Is it possible to cool a physical system just by using information processing? And more concretely, let's assume that this is the system. We have a stream of qubits. And what we want to do is cool, let's say, this qubit, which we are going to call it the target qubit. And what we are allowed to use is just global unitary on this string of qubits. And one of the rules is that we are not going to let use projective measurements. And there are several reasons for that. One of them is because in several platforms, it's not possible to do projector measurements. For example, in ensemble of qubits, like in NMR, you will not have access to individual qubits to do projections. So we want to keep just using global unitaries. And also, in the cases where you are able to do the projections, for example, in superconducting qubits, they are not perfect. So this method will help to do it even better than the, like in combination with the projections to improve the purity of one of the qubits. And also, we are going to have a heat bath, but since we said that we just don't want to do contact with a bat, we are going to assume that it's not cold enough. It's just going to be helpful, but it's not going to be the main reason that we are cooling the system. So it's a heat bath, but not too cold. <laughs> so when we look what happened with the target qubit, just first to see what we have to do, the state of the qubit can be described by this type of density matrix, two by two. And we are going to use the entropy, the von Neumann, that is defined in this way and the purity, just the trace of the rho square. If we assume that this qubit has a Hamiltonian sigma set type, to define the temperature, we are going to use the state in the thermal, like a Gibbs state with this Hamiltonian. So in this plot, we show how the purity and the entropy depends with the inverse of the temperature. So we can see that for large beta, is the case when we have low temperature. So it's going to be equivalent to increase purity, decrease entropy, 
and decrease the temperature. So just to be a little bit more like focused, we are going to try to increase purity, which is equivalent to cool. So going to the question, this kind of problem was first studied by Schumann and Basirani in the 90s. And the problem with using unitaries globally is that you cannot decrease the entropy of the system. So this, but what can we do is, in this case, since we cannot decrease the entropy of the global system, but we can redistribute it. So in this way, we will have to try to find a unitary that is, will do, that is going to do like a similar work to an entropy compression. We are going to redistribute the entropy within the system in such a way that we are going to concentrate as much as possible entropy in one side by extracting entropy on the other side. So this is equivalent to cooling down part of the system at the expense of warming up the other qubits. So this unitary will depend on what's the total system, and it's going to be optimized to minimize the entropy of the target qubit. Uh, here I just pick the simplest example. Assume that we have three qubits. Each of them will have this state, just in a diagonal state. And this epsilon zero is called polarization. It's just like a way to measure how pure it is. When this one is close to one, this state is going to be higher. With we have like higher probability to be in the state zero. So the Initial state, let's assume that it's a product state. So it's going to be given by this thing. So to see it simpler, I will just put the diagonal of this density matrix. And here, the simplest case, since we want to increase the probability of this qubit to be in the state zero, what we have to do is find a unitary that will increase the values of the probabilities of this for elements, because when we sum all of them, they are going to give the probability of the first qubit to have the state zero. So from here, um, since this epsilon is bigger than zero, we will see that these two elements can be permuted. This one is bigger than this one, so if we just make a permutation of them, we are going to increase the, pol the probability of the first qubit to have the state zero. So in this case, that unitary corresponds to just changing these two states, and this is the gate that corresponds to this unitary. And in particular, when the initial temperature is high, we will see that after applying this unitary, the temperature of the target qubit will decrease to this value, while the second and the third qubits are going to be warmer. It's going to be twice the temperature of before. So just by using these unitaries, we are going to have some limitations, because I already said the entropy cannot be decreased in the whole system just by using unitaries. So this is going to put some constraints. And the problem with this is will that we will require a lot of resources. For example, in NMR, when you start with something that is highly mixed, to have purity of their one, you will need qubits like around 10 to the 12. So this is not practical. So what we were considering and is using the second scheme, like using now a bat. Since we already said, we're going to have a redistribution of entropy. So on this extreme, we are going to have some qubits that are hotter. In the case when these qubits are hotter than the bat, we can use the bat just to refresh these qubits. So this can be equivalent. OK, we're going to take some of the qubits as a reset qubits. These are the ones that we can make contact with the bat. And to refresh them, it's just going to be equivalent to trace out that qubit and replace with a qubit from the bat. So when we have this state, now we can apply a new entropy compression, since now we can still use the space that we have here to put a little bit more of entropy. So we will have to find another unitary in such a way that we are going to redistribute again the entropy here. And we can keep iterating this 
steps until the target qubit arrives to the steady state. And this was an open question for almost 10 years. What's the limit of cooling for this kind of processes? And it was hard to find because every time that you do these steps, you will have to optimize what's the unitary that you need for the next steps. So that's what I work. But I was solving this in a different approach. So instead of focusing in the target qubit, we can focus on the reset qubit. Since every time that we do the entropy compression, this one is going to be hotter to the bat, then it means that we can keep doing a second uh, follow iteration of the process. The steady state is going to be when this reset qubit, after the entropy compression, will have exactly the temperature of the bat. So that's the ending of the protocol. So by solving this, we found analytic expressions of what's going to be the limits for cooling with this process. So basically, we found the analytical expression for the extreme of qubits. We found that the coldest one is going to be the target qubit, second coldest, and so on, until you arrive to the reset qubit, which will have the temperature of the bath. And each of these states will give have this density matrix, and this epsilon is going to be given by this. So maybe to see <coughs> in a better way, just to plot the temperature of how the how it's changing, and then we will see that the final temperature for the target qubit is going to be smaller than the temperature of the bat in uh, an exponential wi way with the number of qubits. This m prime is just the number of qubits that we have in the middle between the target qubit and the reset qubit. So you can see that we can have something much colder than the bat, depending on the size of our system. And here I just plot for different number of qubits what's going to be the final purity as a function of the inverse of the temperature of the bat. So that results were presented in the first paper of the tree that I'm talking today. So basically, we found what's the achievable cooling with this method. For the second part, we were wondering if this is already the fundamental limit for all these kind of methods. Since in the paper of Schumann, Moore, and Weinstein, in the 2005, they claim that this method was the optimal in entropy extraction and the refreshing step. So basically, they would answer this question with yes. And also in a recent work with Mosca and Racy, they also by based on this paper claim that the limit that we already have, they are the fundamental for this type of methods. But we realized that there were some implicit assumptions. Basically, they were claiming that the reset of the qubit is the optimal. That means when they do the contact with the reset qubit with the bat. And the second implicit assumption is that the initial state is going to be in the product state. So with that, the answer would be no. They are not the fundamental limits. And here, each of these two points is the two projects that I'm going to talk, like the two other different papers. So for the first one, when they were claiming that the reset step is the optimal one, what they were assuming is that it will be just like a swap of the reset qubit with the bat. So in general, there are different ways that we can interact with the bat. A more general way would be like taking the system of the reset taking the reset qubits and the whole bat and try to apply a global unitary. That would be a little bit more general than just making a swap. And for this, we wanted to pick a different type of reset, one that is more physical, physically motivated, and try to prove that we can make a higher cooling than the one that we had before. So for this, we base on an effect that is a quite all effect, but so far no one relate with quantum information. So we were the first to try to describe this kind of process in terms of quantum information processing. 
And what it is, is like two spins, and they are in a magnetic field. What they do is first trying to mix one of the qubits just by sending random pulses. So what you are going to do is that you are going to decrease the purity of the second one. But when you let the whole system re thermalize again with the VAT, what we are going to see is that the purity of the, of the first qubit is going to increase. So that already shows that the previous method was not the optimal one because the previous one cannot do better than yeah, when we have two qubits with the previous method, you cannot make it better than the temperature of the bat. You will need more than two to get the improvements. So with this one, we prove and we first try to understand what is happening internally. In the first step, when you are just like randomizing the second qubit, and then just let the system evolve again to the equilibrium, they are going to go there are going to be like some transitions between the energy levels when they return to the thermal equilibrium. So when you have, okay, here the gammas represent the probability of the transitions between these levels. When you have that the transition between the zero zero and the one one of these two energy levels for the qubits is much bigger than the transitions of the other two, we will observe the effect that was described by Overhouse in this article. Actually, they describe with Solomon equations, but we wanted to create a circuit for reproducing the same effect. So basically here, we found what would be the set of crowd operators that will reproduce this effect. So we put it in this different shape. It's not the conventional one because it's not going to be unitary evolution. And yeah, if you want to see more details, you can see the second paper. And with this new reset of operations, we design a new algorithmic link by combining these two type of resets. So this one is the one that I just described. And the gamma one is the making just the swap as they were using before. So we, we, we were able to do it better. Here I just plot like, the polarization of the bat and the polarization of the final after applying the method. So here in green, we have the PPA, that is the first method that I described, just for two qubits. The NOE, that is the effect just by itself. And the red one is the new method that we designed just to show that it's possible to make it better. And also in the same paper, we did a generalization just for bigger system systems. So it's similar the idea with a large number of qubits. And regarding the second implicit assumption that they were using is that they start with the product state. So first, we realized that there's going to be some problems when the system is starting in a different initial state. For example, if you have a Hamiltonian which has interacting term, when you start in the ground state of this Hamiltonian, and if the interacting term does not commute with the local Hamiltonians, you are going to start with initial correlations in the system. So what we want to see first is what would happen if you just blindly apply the original method without taking care of the correlations. So here, we are just putting the kappas are the coupling, and H is the energy gap that you will have. So when the coupling is zero, it would correspond to the case when there are not correlations. So you can see that the polarization is increasing as expected. But when we start increasing the correlations, the, cop the string coupling here, we start see that the increase is not as good as expected. And actually, there are some cases that just because of this interacting term, you are going to decrease the polarization instead of increasing it. So for that, we had a different idea since they were not taking care about how to use the initial correlations. And was instead of seeing that as a problem, try to design a new method which take advantage of the initial correlations. 
And here we were using some tools of quantum information processing and quantum field theory. There's a method that is called quantum energy teleportation. And basically this method uses the um, correlations to extract energy locally from the systems. So we wanted to prove that you can also use these methods for cooling the system when you have correlations. So just I want to describe briefly what is quantum energy teleportation, but if you are interested, you can check the reference of Masahiro Hota. So quantum energy teleportation, in the minimal case, just let's take two qubits and assume that they are correlated. When they are in a passive state, assuming that they're in a passive state, you are not going to be able to extract energy from the system, but what they do is just using first a POVM in one of the qubits. With this, you are going to have some information of the system, and since they are in correlations, when you use the classical information that comes from the outcome of the POVM, you are going to be able to apply an informed unitary. So with this unitary, they prove that they can make activation of the system, and they are going to be able to extract energy from the locally from B. So you can check the reference if you want. So using the same method, we wanted to do um, yeah. Okay, yeah, actually we were doing <laughs> the same. But instead of focusing just on the energy extraction, we want to see how the purity increases. And here I'm plotting like some of the results that we got for the different couplings, as I mentioned before. Like this is the initial purity as a function of the inverse temperature. So as you can see, when we have like strong coupling, the initial purity is the worst one. But after applying this method, you can see that this green goes to the final, the one that is in the top. And so on, the red one goes here. So we show that when we have these initial correlations and using QET, it's going to be possible to increase the purity beyond the previous methods only for the cases when you have strong couplings. And actually are the cases where the first method fails. So that would be like a complementary method just to cool physical systems. And we also designed a different method instead of using POVM. We are just going to use an ancilla and make it fully unitary. So it's exactly the same protocol that I designed by using the ancilla. So the first POVM in the First qubit is going to be by a global unitary on the first qubit and then Scylla. And instead of sending the classical communication, we are going to use the same ancilla that we use for the first unitary to implement the second unitary. And here we just show like some of the results, the initial purity, and compare with the other methods. So this is what we'll, we'll have with the new method in combination with quantum energy teleportation. And the green one corresponds to the case where you are not taking advantage of the correlations. And the results can be found in this paper. So just in conclusion, um, heat bath algorithmic cooling is a really promising method for increasing the purity of some system where you are not able to implement projective measurements. And what we did first was calculating what are the limits of these kind of methods when you use some restrictions, and also remove two of the implicit assumptions of all the previous methods. So with this, we showed that it's possible to make it even better, and we present new algorithmic cooling methods. So that's it. And I want to say thank you to the organizers of the conference. And um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Nayali, for the interesting talk. Now we have time for questions. Uh, in the first part, I couldn't understand why do you have a, the steady state is a product state at the end? Like, yeah, before this, before the, yeah. Yeah. 
uh, you mean like why is a product stay? Um, because you have already applied the unitaries. Mm -hmm. So h how do you guarantee that it's still a product state? Is this a right? Yeah, actually, basically what we did was just by solving, you assume a state and you apply the two steps of the method and you just solve and equalize to the previous state just to find that it's a fixed point. So in that case, we found that it's given by a product state. But you mean like during the process, I, I'm not sure why it's driving to the product state, but if you just consider the asymptotic limit, it's going to be just without, qubits without correlations in the limit. Uh, more questions? Thanks for the very nice talk. Um, I just have a question. So basically you use uh, qubits to cool qubits. Have you ever thought about uh, extending this to qubits maybe? Like maybe still cooling qubits but using qubits instead or or not cooling qubits, but qubits, or hot? Well, just wondering. Yeah, actually, we also studied that cases. I didn't present it here, but the results are also in this paper. So basically, the difference would be in the internal part of the qubits of the string. So we are just going to care about the dimension of the system that you have in the middle. So if you have, instead of qubits, a qubit, so we are just going to have as a function of the dimension in the middle. So independently what you have as a computational qubit. Okay, <laughs> thank you. More questions? Um, maybe I have uh, a quick one. So I, uh, I was not sure what was the principle that limited the operations that you can use to call. So at some point you use unitaries, at some point you use this uh, more general process. So what's the physical principle beyond those limitations? Uh, okay, yeah, in the string of qubits, we are just allowing to use unitary operations. And what we were not restricting is the how you are going to interact with the bat. Before they were just claiming that the best that you can do is just re-thermalizing to the temperature of the bat. And they thought that it would be the best that you can do with a bat. So we show that is not that the case because you still can use unitaries if you apply globally in the in the risk qubits and the VAT. So you can have something better than just making a swap. So in this case, we are still using unitary operations, but when you see locally for the risk qubits, that process is not described unitarily. Okay, so thanks. Yep. Uh, let's thank Nayeli again.